The ratio test is a really useful convergence test, which can tell us if a series is divergent, absolutely convergent, or occasionally it's inconclusive. We're going to go over the ratio test and three examples of applying it. To understand the test and its conclusions, it's important that you know these terms. We say that a series is absolutely convergent if the series of the absolute values is convergent. If adding up the absolute values of the terms is a convergent series, then certainly the original series is convergent since it might have some negative terms that would cancel out some of the positive ones. So if a series is absolutely convergent, then it's certainly plainly convergent. That is to say, absolute convergence is a stricter condition than convergence is. Now, if a series happens to be convergent but is not absolutely convergent, we would call it conditionally convergent. The ratio test can tell us that a series is absolutely convergent, which of course also means that it is normally convergent. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson going over these terms in more detail if you need to review that more but let's get on to statement of the ratio test. The ratio test says this. If the limit of the absolute values of the ratios of consecutive terms of a series is equal to something less than one, then the series is absolutely convergent, which of course also means it is convergent. The idea here is disregarding whether or not the terms are negative if the ratio of consecutive terms at infinity is approaching something less than one, then overall the terms of the series are decreasing quickly enough for the series to converge. This is actually a lot like the geometric series test, where if the ratio of a geometric series has a magnitude less than one, you know the series converges. On the other hand, just like with the geometric series test, if the limit of the absolute values of the ratios of consecutive terms of the series is something greater than one, the terms are actually getting bigger, and so the series will be divergent. If the limit is equal to one, the ratio test is inconclusive and other tests would need to be used. Make sure you notice what we're taking a limit of here for the ratio test. I've described it as the magnitude of the ratio of consecutive terms of the series because it's a n plus one divided by a n. So those would be consecutive terms. We divide them, take the absolute value, and the limit of that is what we need to assess to use the ratio test. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson where we prove the ratio test. For now, let's get into the examples. In this first example, we are asked to test the convergence of this series, the sum of terms negative one to the n times n squared over two to the n. To do this, we're going to apply the ratio test. The ratio test tells us that we need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of the n plus 1th term to the nth term, so the ratio of consecutive terms. That ratio looks like this. Because it's inside absolute value bars, we completely disregard that negative 1 to the n. It's not going to matter because we have absolute value bars. Then we take the rest of the series, n squared over 2n, and plug in n plus 1. That gives us the n plus 1th term. And that's what we see here in the numerator. Remember, it should be a n plus 1 divided by a n. So in the numerator, we have a n plus 1. That's n plus 1 squared divided by 2 to the n plus 1. We need to divide this by a n. And so, of course, in the denominator, we see n squared over 2 to the n. Again, this is the n plus 1th term divided by the nth term. It's the ratio of consecutive terms of the series. We then just evaluate the limit. This n plus 1 squared is in the numerator, and since we're dividing by a fraction with 2 to the n in the denominator, the 2 to the n actually flips up to the numerator as well. 
In the denominator, we have 2 to the n plus 1, and we're also dividing by n squared, so you can see the denominator there. We're just rewriting. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so that's how we get there. Then we have n factors of 2 here in the numerator, and n plus 1 factors of 2 in the denominator. n of those factors of 2 will cancel out and leave a single factor of 2 in the denominator. Besides that, we also have n squared in the denominator, so in total that's 2n squared in the denominator. In the numerator, again we cancelled out all those 2 to the n's, and then we have n plus 1 squared, which is n squared plus 2n plus 1. We now see that the numerator and denominator are polynomials with degree 2. So the limit, as n goes to infinity, is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients of these equal degree polynomials. The leading coefficient in the numerator is just 1, and the leading coefficient in the denominator is 2, and so the limit is 1 half. We could, of course, just drop the absolute value bars, if you like, because everything we're dealing with here is a positive integer. So the limit is 1 half, and of course, looking at the ratio test, what's important important about this limit is that it's less than 1. This indicates to us that the series is absolutely convergent. And of course, being absolutely convergent also implies that it is convergent. If we were to take absolute values of all the terms, it would converge. And so, of course, without absolute values, as it originally is, it is a convergent series. That's all there is to it. You might want to try this one yourself, our second example. We're going to test the convergence of this series, the sum of terms n to the n divided by n factorial. To do this, we will apply the ratio test. This means we need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of consistency consecutive terms of the series. So in the numerator, we have the n plus 1th term. That means n plus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. Then in the denominator, we have the nth term, which is just n to the n divided by n factorial. Now, of course, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so we'll begin rewriting that. This means we're multiplying by n factorial in the numerator, and n to the n will actually be in the denominator. We, of course, also have n plus 1 factorial in the denominator and n plus 1 to the n plus 1 in the numerator. Now, n factorial in the numerator will almost completely cancel out with n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. It's just going to leave n plus 1 behind in the denominator. Also, we have n plus 1 to the n plus 1 in the numerator. That's n plus 1 factors of the n plus 1. We're going to take one of those n plus 1s out, thus writing it as n plus 1 times n plus 1 to the n. Note that the n factorial is gone now because we canceled it out with the n plus 1 factorial. We also have n to the n in the denominator, and we've dropped the absolute value bars because everything here is a positive integer. Since we took one of the n plus 1 factors of n plus 1 out of n plus 1 to the n plus 1, we now have this n plus 1 in the numerator, which we can cancel out with the n plus 1 in the denominator, thus leaving us with n plus 1 to the n divided by n to the n, which we can rewrite as n plus 1 over n to the power of n. But then, splitting this across the addition, n divided by n is 1, and 1 divided by n is 1 over n. Thus, this is the limit, as n goes to infinity, of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n. You should recognize this as being the irrational number e. And of course, e is greater than 1. Hence, the ratio test tells us that our series is actually divergent. So since this limit is equal to e, which is greater than 1, by the ratio test, we have that the original series is divergent. The only other possibility with the ratio test is that it is inconclusive. Let's do a quick example of that with the series 1 over n squared. To use the ratio test, we need to look at the n plus 1th term, 1 over n plus 1 squared, divided by the nth term, 1 over n squared. Put this in absolute value bars and take the limit as n goes to infinity. Then we evaluate this limit. We can drop the absolute value bars because everything here is a positive integer. Dividing by 1 over n squared is the same as multiplying by n squared over 1. So we can rewrite this as n squared divided by n plus 1 squared. 
n plus 1 squared in the denominator is the same as n squared plus 2n plus 1. Thus, we see the numerator and denominator are both degree 2 polynomials, the ratio of their leading coefficients is 1, and thus that is the value of this limit. It's 1, and so the ratio test is inconclusive. Of course, we know by the p-series test, this is a p-series with p equal to 2, hence it is convergent, but the ratio test is not able to let us conclude that. It is inconclusive for this series. We, of course, don't want to spend time carrying out an inconclusive test, so this begs the question, when should we use the ratio test? In general, you should consider using the ratio test for series that involve factors factorials or other products, including a constant raised to the nth power, so exponentials often the ratio test will be useful for. So those are situations where the ratio test is often able to be used to determine convergence or divergence. You're not going to want to use it for algebraic functions of n. Those are going to give us an inconclusive result, just like we saw here. This is a very simple algebraic function, and whatever the algebraic function is, if you try to use the ratio test on it, you're going to end up getting a limit of 1. It's going to be inconclusive. It's going to end up being very much like this. When you try to apply the ratio test to an algebraic function, you're going to end up getting equal leading coefficients for polynomials of the same degree, and you're going to get 1. That's also true for algebraic functions where the numerator and or denominator involve square roots. You're not dealing with polynomials, but still you're going to get a limit of 1 if you apply the ratio test. Here are some typical examples of series for which the ratio test would be useful. If you want more practice, including the solutions for these three series, consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. But that is a bit about the ratio test and how to use it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Audio.